Hello, welcome to this episode of um, the linear algebra. So we are trying to go through the basic that we need for linear algebra. Okay, so I have with me here divisibility of integers. Okay, so when we say two numbers divide each other, or a number is divisible by another number, then what, what, what do we mean? Okay, so let's try to go through this very quickly. So an integer x is said to x is said to be divisible by an integer y. That's y device x. Okay. So now this is what you should know. The bigger number is always at last. Okay, and the smaller number is come first. So y device x. If there is some integer c such that we can write x to be equal to y c. So let's say um I have I say that um, x is said to be divisible by y. That means y divides x. Okay. Now this is true if you can say that x is equal to some another integer c times y. Okay. So this is what we are trying to say. I hope you get what I'm trying to do here. So this is the basis of it. Now y divides s can also be understood as y is a divisor of x. So you can then say that um, x over y here is equal to c so y is a device of x okay i hope this is cool then you can also talk about um the second one y is a factor of x so if i'm saying that um x is equal to y c okay then y is a factor of x means that okay um there is for the multiples of x okay or you can you can factorize x as y and some other numbers okay i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say if i have four and i know that two divides four so four over two is equal to two and this two is a factor of four because the factors of all four is equal to they are i think one two and four itself okay so that's it so um when y device x that means y is also a factor of x the last one that you can also say here is that x is a multiple of y okay and that comes from this point if y is a factor of x then it means x is a multiple of y because x will be equal to some integer c times the y okay i hope this is cool so now let's go through some basic properties that arise as as far as the visibility of integers is concerned and we will we'll then try to prove them okay so for all integers a belonging to the integer z here yeah, so z is a set of integers then a device 0 1 device a and a device a this means that if you pick any integer in the integer z any number from z then that number device 0 that number device sorry one device that number and also that number device itself so the proof i'll prove the theory of these here so a device zero now this will imply that there's another number c which belong to the integers such that zero over a is equal to the constant c or maybe um let me the number c or let me clean, clean this and try to write it zero is equal to the number c times a okay and what will be that c now if you look for that c then it means that c is equal to zero over a and this is equal to zero now it means that c is equal to zero so it means zero is always equal to zero times any number you pick in the integer a integer c okay so it means that this holds for the number zero i hope you understood this so if a divides zero then there should be a number in the integer c such that the zero is equal to that number times a okay and then that, that number you'll be able to find is what zero so zero is equal to zero times any number a in the integer i hope this makes sense now let's come to the second one i think this is not straight okay all right so now the second one is saying that this one if a is any integer then it means one device a Okay, so one device A here means that 
there is a constant or a number c which belongs to the integers such that this um, a is equal to one times that constant okay so now we should look for that constant i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say here you should look for that constant okay so always if you remember the second one here is equal to the first one times the constant okay so i hope this helps okay so the second one a here is equal to one times the constant so now it means c is equal to a over one and any number over one is equal to the number itself so it means the constant we should find in z such that one will divide a for every integer a belonging to c is the integer sorry z is the integer itself what i mean is that if i pick um any, any integer 2 then 1 divides 2 means that 2 is equal to 1 times some number but it should be the same number itself so this is what is happening here so c here is equal to a so a is equal to 1 times some number but that number should be the same a i hope this makes sense so here once you are able to find c to be already c is an integer but this a a here is also an integer so if c is equal to a which all of these are integers then this relation holds okay oh this is okay all right so let me do this and do the other one on the last side now if i say a is an integer then a device a holds means that this a this one is equal to some constant in the um how do i call it the integer z times a okay this a but c should be equal to what a over a and this this is multiplication all of these are multiplications okay so just like that so here too is a multiplication so c will be equal to a over a is what one so one also belongs to the integers so once you're able to find an integer c which is one that belongs to the integer z it means a device a because for this relation a will be equal to c times a where our c here is one so it will be one times a i hope this this makes sense all right so that is it for the first property now the second one is saying that if a is an integer and a device one then this by implies that a is equal to plus or minus one so this one let's let's go through it quickly if a device one then it means there is an integer c such that or c belonging to the z such that um, one over a or we can we can do it like one is equal to a times c but remember this c should be an integer okay so c is equal to one over a now here for every number of a that you are for all the integers a that belong to z if i pick two okay this c should be a whole number so it's supposed to be an integer not a fraction okay so the only condition that can make this c be an integer is when you have a to be one and that will be equal to one or or you have c is equal to one over negative one which also equals negative one i hope this makes sense so when you have a to be one you have c to be one and you have a to be negative one you have c to be negative one okay so now if i do say that okay it's one and negative one are not the only numbers in integers you can pick any number at all but you realize that if i pick two here if i pick two and put it here i'll have one over two which is half and half is not an integer okay so we should have always you should give us an integer so it's only these two conditions that makes it hold to get a number for c so when a is equal to positive one then we'll have our c to be one and when a is equal to negative one we'll have our c to be equal to negative one and this is what we're talking about that if a divides one 
and a is an integer then a is either plus or minus one this is cool right now let's go to the next one the next one is saying if a divides b and c divides d then a c divides b d all right so the proof to all these are integers so the proof to is very simple so now if a divides b then we know that there's let's say an integer x okay so that b is equal to ax and also if c divides d then there's an integer let's say y which belongs to the integer so that d is equal to yc or maybe cy okay now looking at that b times d okay um, b times d or you can first of all let's call this uh, equation one and call this equation two and with this if i multiply b and d the two equations together i'll multiply this side and this side and then i'll come and multiply this side and this side as well i hope this makes sense all right so b times d is equal to ax cy and if you regroup this you have something like bd is equal to ac multiplying xy but remember um, we have uh, x both x and y to be integers right so x and y belongs to the integers and that xy the product this if you multiply these two the final answer you get will belong to the integers okay so i can say let's x y to be because let's say p which belong to the integer because when you multiply the two of them you get an integer okay now this implies that bd is equal to ac times an integer p so once you have this relation think of this as just one item and this as one item so we have an integer bd being equal to another integer let's say ac times an integer then this will imply that ac divides bd because with this relation we're supposed to write bd to be equal to ac times an integer let's say p or whatever and we're able to show this so this means that this relation holds and that this condition is also true right i hope you understood this so that is the divisibility of integers now you go to this last but one if a divides b and b divides c then a, c, a divides c all these are integers okay so first off if a divides b then there's an integer c x that belongs to the integer z such that b is equal to a x now if um, b divides c then there is also an integer so you can call this an equation one this is an integer y which belongs to the integer z and with that um our c is equal to by okay i hope you understand this so um with this with this we can kindly do something to both equations okay so if i do want to show that indeed c device um a device c then what we can do here is um write something like um i don't know but maybe make make b the subject in one of them okay now the first equation is b is equal to ac this one too has a b in it okay so i want to show that um a device c meaning c is equal to some a times an integer so we want to do something like that so now from the first equation b is equal to ax so i can put it here in the second equation and say that c is equal to now ax y but remember this x and y are integers when you multiply them you have so you can let x y to be equal to let's say p okay now with this we are good to go then it means that our c is equal to a p where p belongs to the integers okay this belongs to the integers and that this will imply that a divide c okay we can actually write c to be called a times something that thing is what p i hope this these proofs are very simple right 
so now the last one is that we have if x device a and x device b these two then we say that x device m a plus n before all x a m n belonging to um, the integers okay so the first thing is that if x device a then we we'll say that um there's no c in this so we can say there is a constant c side that which belong to the complex no, sorry the integers say that a is equal to cx or a x c or whatever you want to say the second thing is if x device b then there is another constant okay another constant let's say um Mm, let's say let me see there's no d okay let's say d okay if it belongs to the integers and with this we can say b is equal to xd or something like that okay i hope this is cool so now if i pick any arbitrary two integers m and n which belong to the integers and i multiply m by a i'll have so let's say first equation the second equation so m times equation one will imply that you have um how do you call it m a being equal to m x c okay so you can call this equation three and that we can go to the second one and do same n times okay n times two we imply that we have nb okay is equal to um nxd okay so this is what you have now you call this equation four so if i add three and four then what will happen what will happen is that we'll have ma plus nb should be equal to mxc plus nxd now we have ma plus nb is equal to x out okay then we have um, mc plus nd right so now remember we are done we are done with whatever we were looking for because from this part that says this is what we want to prove we want to prove that x device ma plus nb this means that ma plus nb should be equal to x times something and that is being proved here proven here that this m c n d they are all integers when you multiply these two you get an integer this will give you an integer when you add them you have an integer okay so in all we'll be able to say that m a plus n b is equal to x times some integer p okay where p is equal to m c plus n d belonging to the integers so with this we can show that x device ma plus nb this was pretty cool right so that's that's all about the visibility of integers so in our next discussion we'll pick numbers and l learn how to apply this divisibility of numbers or integers to find the greatest common divisor gcd of two integers and also hcf sometimes lcm and the rest of two numbers okay using these applications so thank you and thank you very much if you have subscribed to my channel if you are not subscribed to kindly like my video share it and also subscribe see you next time